Good morning, Nottinghamshire Madness and Brompton fans. On a tour today, uh, partly Duke's Trail, partly Sustrans National Cycle Network number six, and then cutting cross country on a bridal way to the Welbeck Estate farm shop, Cresswell Crags, and then at Cresswell, Cresswell Railway Station for the ride home. We're currently at Shybrook Railway Station. This is a starting point for the ride. It's going to be about 15, 16 miles long. We're on the uh, Brompton M6R 2018 model. You don't see much of this. This is what I call my adventure bike. It runs with a dynamo hub, dynamo lights, 39 tooth strong light, chain ring, Got a tea bag on the front. I'm persevering with a monkey cage. Don't like it still. It costs a lot of money. Uh, that's why I'm using it. It does match my Brompton water bottle, but it's um, still don't like it. Little Caradice tour roll saddlebag. So that's the bike. The weather is sunny and not sunny and very light breeze heading from that direction which I guess is uh, the sun's up there I guess it's pretty west southwest something like that anyway we set off down the trail we've got a mixed trail of a bit of tarmac a little bit of road some compacted standard sustrans sort of hardcore type surface probably a bit of roadway through Columba park and some single track so i'll catch you in a bit guys i thought this would test the gopro's image stabilization we're filming into the sun and uh it's a bumpy single track. I'm just going a little bit of it just so you can see what we're riding. In fact, one clip to you, see what happens then. So, like I said, a bit of single track into the sun. Not the ideal for filming on the GoPro. It does have an image, image, image stabilization. This track, I rode this track on a cycle camp three years ago and it's actually a far better surface than it was then. It's a, the surface was uh, really rocky and muddy. I think it had been washed out by heavy rains but now the stones are getting the, uh, getting the sand to fill in between them again and it's, it's smoothed out really quite nicely. We'll stop at this barrier just bear with me whilst I shake you all about. There's a sign for the 648 National Cycle Network. So we're going to go left and then we follow the road for a short while and then go to the right towards Warsop. So we're still travelling into the sun, travelling down to Warsop. Lovely track, looks like it's going to get a little bit rougher. Beautiful open countryside. Typical uh, North Nottinghamshire type of route surface. Certainly no issue for the Brompton. got one of me I'm in full camo gear today as you'll see you won't see me amongst the uh, amongst the parrots field of wheat coming along nicely this is a warsop is and the whole area is quite diverse. It's part of the 
the Dukeries of North Nottinghamshire and uh, so Clumber Park is one of the Dukeries estates Welbeck estate is another one um, I can't remember what Dukes they are Newcastle, Norfolk Portland come to mind I think because uh, also there's Thorsby estate I'm using Kamut so I've planned the route on Kamut and I've got Kamut talking to me from the uh, S bag, T bag Follow this way for 600 yards, yes my dear, exactly as you tell me. Right, that's enough of me biking, I'll bring you back when I've got through to the other side of Warsop, because I think when we get through Warsop, we've got some really nice single track to do. Before we get to uh, get to the uh, National Cycle Network Route Six, thank you. Sorry about the panting, but this is uh, the view back towards Warsop, and I guess that way is heading over to. I think we're heading this way towards Thorsby. You can see the track becomes single track. Hope it's perfectly doable on the Brompton, I think so. I, I can do it anyway. Uh, it's getting hot. It's getting lovely and hot. Uh, see you soon. Oh, so this is a wow moment came down that farm track down the uh, single track very narrow a bit of concentration needed smooth enough but only like a rabbit track come into this bit of broadleaf woodland fairly young oak tree here it's only about Probably got an eight inch, eight inches across, eight inch diameter there. So I don't like equates to age. Probably just a hundred or so. And over on the other side, you can look to see through the sun shining. Now, as you can see, arable land, over to more woodland, bird song, my voice travels everywhere I'm going to try to keep the camera rolling now as we go downhill a bit definitely need to get the chest mount sorted out because this would have made a cracking cracking video bear with me whilst we get going ah, yeah. the route up to yet has been marked excellently apart from one turn in Shirebrook and I guess, if you don't know which way to go, go straight. This is straight down here, down the hill. What a beautiful bit of woodland. Nice and cool under here as well, under the canopy of the trees. Not many people about this morning, I've seen a couple of log walkers. People often ask on these NCN routes, are they suitable for road bikes? Uh, I'll question whether this is suitable for road bikes, the bits I've just been riding up, uh, but I've done it on the Brompton. But I am on Shrawweave Marathon Plus tyres, I wouldn't want to do it on the Kojaks, which is what I nearly came on. I'm glad I didn't, and there's no mud. So it's... Uh, it's Excellently signposted again. So we've got a hill. 
So I'll just stop here for a minute and uh, I am recording the route on Kamut and I'll try to add that link in the in the description. Let's just listen to the bird life for a minute. No words to say. Morning, sir. Lovely day. Film. Yeah, filming, yes. No idea where we've come out. And this we're at the back of Budby Forest. I do know the area quite well from a road perspective. A little bit different as waterworks here, might have a name on it. things here. Right. Well, I'm supposed to negotiate these. Something like on the back wheel. That's where we've just come down. There's a chap up there we just said hello to. Bird song again. Let's see if we can get a name on this works no parking no parking oh look where I'm going might miss the uh, holes then this probably comes out at Hazel Gap then I'm, I'm just guessing at the minute so really and please beware, no name on there. Lucky place to live, there's a waterworks, Seven Trent. No name on it yet though. Probably bit then. Just get over this bump. Right, we're we sailing now guys. A road crossing ahead. There's a sign at the end, so we'll have a look at that, see what it says. Water life, a couple of chaps here, bird washing. Next 
Hello chaps. Alright, I'll just stop at the end. So oh so we have a concessionary bridleway, Sherwood Forest. So does that mean it's concessionary? Because the National Cycle Network have got an agreement to use it. And if the National Cycle Network or Sustrans decide to ditch this as part of the cycle route because it's not fit for purpose, which I suspect it isn't, does that mean the concession goes with it? Does that mean we've lost more cycle network? Anyway, it was Budby. Let's see if we can get onto the uh, verge here. We've dropped the Brompton on its side, it's not on gear side down. Everyone said, don't on the gears. It's on the water foul. Lovely lake, loads of ducks. Ducks but no geese. There's the waterworks we pass. I don't know if we got a glimpse of that as we came down. How are you doing? Alright? Yeah. The guys on mountain bikes. The next junction we get to is going to be the, the Hazel Gap. Hiya. Right, on to the next junction. This is surfaces like um, crushed brick, I guess. Quite compact, although as you come up the hill, there's a bit of a gully, so the ground's a bit soft in the middle of the gully. Uh, more amazing woodland. We're about Three miles from Clumber Park now, and uh, this is a walker. That's why I stopped here. So I'm looking to the see what I can see through the trees. Another gnarly old oak. We're going to vent this on the uh, Brompton. Nottingham group page there's a, there's a ride and this will probably be uh, <coughs> July or September it will be a slow one with plenty of stops trees to look at birds to listen to Bikes, bikes faring better than me. I've had to undo my shirt. Make them off in a minute. It's uh, it is, it's hot in the sun. But as soon as the uh, sun goes and you're riding and you get that bit of a draft, it sort of drops probably two degrees ambient, and uh, and then you, then you feel the chill. So chicken and egg with regards clothing. Uh, the funny thing is, all I've seen up to yet is uh, lycra clad mountain bikers. Uh, I know I'm walking up this hill, but it's no mountain. I think I've come at the best time. So I guess we're sort of late spring, early summer, aren't we still? Well, having said that, it's summer solstice next week. Insects haven't been too bad either. Wow, what an amazing spot for a picnic. 
Right, onward and upward. So we're at <coughs> we're up to guess Hazel Gap now. Um, busy bit of road. Restricted byway. That means it was at one time a vehicle a, a right of way for all traffic. <coughs> But now it says restricted, so it'll have had a TPO on it, traffic preservation order. I think that's cool, it's not a TPO. An RUPP road user public path that is. Anyway, there's some little saying that means it's got a uh, restriction on it. Sherwood Forest multi user route above the car. Very fast stretch of road um, so caution when crossing there we go Burke in a euro box just having a breather here I've come up that hill I didn't walk it I managed to pedal a bit these um, <clears throat> markers, National Cycle Network markers, were <sighs> something to do with the Royal Bank of Scotland in the days when banking was a very lucrative business to be in. I just want some paint work. So we've got Clipston, 36 miles, Nottingham, 30 miles, Cumber Park, 3 miles, Workshop, 8 miles. National Cycle Network 6. They all have one of these emblems on. And they're all different. And if you've got your crayons, you can do a rubbing and collect them and they all tell a story. I've not ever done that. I suppose I should do. This is a design by D. Andrew Rowe. D. Andrew Rowe, 1998. Again, they're called Millennium Mileposts. In fact, it's probably an M there, you can make it out, which uh, denotes millennium. It doesn't say anything about Royal Bank of Scotland on it though. Anyway, this is a route we're going to take. More of this sort of crushed brick. Kamut said it was an easy route, I think. I'd say it was moderate and difficult in places purely because I guess the route was open in the millennium purely because the way the, route, the over, overgrowth or undergrowth has closed in on the route and made it a bit narrow in places right a bit further Well, those that cycle with me will know I love a photo opportunity. This is one. Beautiful pair of gates. Pillars. Greyhounds, I guess, on top. Rhododendrons. So, this has a star on it and a bit of a garland or stars and a garland. Beautiful raw time fleur de lis. Something of a Oh, 
don't know if you can see that against the sky. Some of a flower there. Very, very lovely tactile stonework. Crest up here. Uh, on the yeah, I think this. Yeah, no idea. Bit of a box pillar there. Fleur de Lis. We have the star again on the gate, and then it's all all repeated over on this side. Crest on the house. House was built in 1824. They're rather splendid. Don't want to encroach on their life too much. Respect the privacy. I assume it's lived in. I'd like to live there. So we're heading still to Clumber Park. Still on National Cycle Network 6. So Duke's Trail, you multi-user route continues down there or goes this way that's the way it cuts through to goes through there to Bothamsall and Bevercoats which used to be old Bevercoats colliery which is sort of just past Thorsby Hall another permissive route I sincerely hope Sustrans don't hold the key to these permissive routes. I'm not anti Sustrans at all. I'm just anti chucking away 25% of the National Cycle Network. That's a whim because it's gone. And it's gone off electronic mapping. Now I've told you about electronic mapping. I'm using Commute today. I'm 60 three years old and I've been riding bikes on bridleways, canal towpaths and places like that I would think on my own since I was probably seven. I could read a map at seven and we used to get the maps from the library in Cropwell Bishop and plan all sorts of escapades. I was on my little rally rodeo. <coughs> my brother I think he had a full size rally three speed and we'd have all these little escapades and uh, so today for the first time since we're seven years old all I've got with me electronic mapping and uh, I plotted a route on uh, this commute I plotted some waypoints and I've been given instructions to do u-turns and all sorts since I left home which I don't don't understand. I'm just looking at these pillars. Aren't they amazing? Anyway, so relying on electronic mapping. I know some of the guys love electronic mapping, um, and it has its purpose. I do record all my rides and commute, and I do share my files and commute, and I look back at them, and it's got the routes and the photographs all included. But it's a uh, Crap. I think we end up there. I think we go there, round, and there. Let's go. Just bear with me whilst I get the, the Brompton up. Not an easy task, single handed. I don't know if I'd want to. Yeah, I'll commute, take the next left. I was getting U-turns earlier. A bit like the dum-dum in the car.
beautiful. I don't know if you can see if the sun, there's no sun on them. Rhododendrons, lovely, lovely flowers. Take the next left. Now turn left. <clears throat> Here we go, turn left. Here we are, Thunder Park. National Trust. National Trust, Trust Clumber Park. I'm a member. Probably need a drink. Wow, look at that tree. Crikey me. Let's pop around this corner and have a look. One down there, look. I guess that came down in the wind. Not being caught, it's fractured off. I've done this route before, believe it or not. Down to Cumber. Look at the gateway from the other side. From the house. All pretty impressive. So Google have a Google on Clumber Park to see who lived here and built this. This uh, 39 tooth chain ring I've got this, it's standard M6R, so it's got six speed, it's got a two speed on the back. Um, I'm in second plus at the moment. I've ridden third plus on some of these trails. I'm in second plus now and it's just a perfect speed for what I want. It's certainly not commuter speed. It's certainly certainly fast enough for what I do. And I, I comfortably cruise, I comfortably average eight miles an hour when I'm out doing my stuff. Uh, I, won't, I won't average eight today because I've just been stopped to look, I've listened to birds, I've looked at trees. Pick flies out my hair, out my nose, out my eye. <laughs> Let's just drop it up into third. That's third plus now, so that's the highest gear I've got. Bird song. Drop it back down. Second, because there's some guys are working here. I'll wait till they've done loading before I uh, go anywhere. I did all right. Thank you, chap. Cheers. I got one of those looks. Uh, I got one of those looks of uh, <laughs> what is he wearing? Brilliant. No lycra and no British national costume grey. Free wheeling. Single-handed. Look ahead, don't look down. Drop it back into third. Give him a pedal. Wow. Little gnarly tree there, dead, dead standing. But that, 
that would be a good one for a, for a ghost walk with the kids. Bring the kids up at night on a ghost walk. And uh, just flash the torch on that. Third minus. Going second. I do like riding second gear. That's my favourite gear. That's why I also gear with a 39. Because it's sort of giving the internals of the hover S. And um, all you're doing then is wearing the tips of the paws, which is an easy job to replace should you have to. You've always got minus, you can drop it down. Certainly, any bike where you have to use first gear to set off is to our gear. Any bike you don't use top gear is also to our gears. Anyway, we're at Plumber Bridge now. So this is the end of Plumber Lake. I'll just turn around so you can look at my ugly mug. There's some people here. I don't want to get those in shot. Hello. Bit of a dismount and a walk. I'll just get onto the bridge without getting people into shot and uh, have a look. The bridge has been closed for a, for a number of years. I think somebody crashed the car on it and did an awful lot of damage. You see all the new stonework. I think it's uh, we closed it. We'll just go over here. So this leads into the into the Clumber Lake, and I guess it's the River Morn. I don't know. Need to check on that. Anyway, next stop. Coffee. All right, so we've been through Clumber Park. Just going to exit through this gateway. I didn't go to the cafe. I've done the cafe on a different video. Um, <coughs> rather nice. Couple of lodge houses. what's called Clumber Road. I think we'll pause for a break soon and uh, have a drop of water. Not too far from Welbeck I don't think now. Certainly it's time to have a, a wet of the whistle. In fact this looks like a suitable tree there's a lady on a horse so I don't want to particularly want to catch her up well so see you on the next little short snippet just looking back to where we came from An amazing sound. Well, it's heavy going. Um, thank God it's dry. It's certainly it's okay on the Brompton. Uh, it won't be a Brompton ride in the wet. Could be a hybrid bike, touring bike. Um, <clears throat> This is sort of what I've really been up to yet today, other than through Columbus Park has been pretty much on the edge of a 
what you'd want to do with a Brompton. Um, having said that, if it's dry, come and do it. Because it's a beautiful, beautiful ride. <coughs> Since I left Lumber Park, I can't say I've seen a soul. Um, oh, sorry, it's bumpy. It's not really single handed riding territory, but we'll give it a go. If I fall off, you can laugh along with me. A few more holes, or potential mud holes. Seen quite a few ladies and gentlemen of a certain age on electric bikes going nice and steady, not going too not going too fast. Uh, seems like uh, e-bikers have to go, go along at 15 miles an hour. But certainly, ladies and gentlemen of a certain age, I've seen a lot of e-bikes, a lot of older, <laughs> I'm probably older, um, a lot of later generation enjoying the the route on e-bikes which is absolutely fantastic uh, like I say it's just perfectly doable really on the Brompton today uh, but you can see where there's been big mud holes I think I've passed the worst of them but this section for me is on my bucket list. Hey yeah. Hi there. It's a section I've never never ridden. It's always been on the bucket list. I think I've looked at it with my with my son when he was about in his early teens. Um, I think then was sort of uh, too muddy. It's certainly perfectly doable today. Fantastic. Fantastic woodland to cycle through. I can't go too fast. Else I'll end up on my head. I did end up on my head on one of the uh, few rides ago. On the water rail, Lincoln. I took a took a pounding to the head. Uh, landed on my head. And I'm not a uh, I'm not doing a cycle helmet debate because I often don't wear a cycle helmet. I thought with today's conditions, it might be prudent just to. Uh, have the lid on. I think we'll stop. Uh, I think that's a yew tree. You're probably looking into the sun. I think there's a few yew trees along here. Broadleaf on this side. Robin would used to make his bows from branches of, of yew trees. Probably not actually. Just, I don't know. Boy Scout days, I know all the trees. That's a long time ago. So yeah, this is back this is a section which is heading into Welbeck Estate. I'm probably I'm probably on Welbeck Estate land now actually. I haven't seen a scientist say Going the other way, I'm in Clumber, then I probably won't do. And the chain link fencing looks more private estate than National Trust fencing, if you get the drift. I don't think it's a good place for wild camping because I know 
they have a lot of uh, ground management. They have a big ground management team look after the forests and they know the patrol in the evening and in the early hours. I guess you could find somewhere for wild camping but I think it's too uh, it's the wrong place. In Clumber Park, in fact you've probably seen my video, there's a caravan a motorhome club in Clumber Park and I've camped there. out with a tea bag on this morning. Um, two reasons. One is it's white and uh, the other is obviously it's capacity should I have a successful visit to Welbeck Farm Shop. If you know what I mean. Right it's going to get really rough down here so I just stop. So you can imagine what this is going to be like in the wet on the Brompton. But it is an, um, an absolutely amazing ride. And I've probably still got five miles to do, I suppose. I don't know. Not bothered. Get there when I get there. So I'm certainly here. Uh, Looking to forward to the, the allure of uh, what Welbeck Farm Shop has to offer, and of course, Cresswell Crags, which is just a little bit further on from, from the Welbeck Farm Shop. So, unless anything interesting crops up between now and uh, Welbeck, I'll, uh, I'll see you then. But I did say I would stop if I saw something of interest. Well, I have, and the sun's totally wrong to capture it on film. But I found a gateway. Chap on a gravel bike coming through. How you doing? All right. All right, mate. Cast iron gate posts. Two more cast iron gate posts. How amazing is that? How awful is it to see that they've been just left here like this um, obviously no money in it but come on Welbeck Estates you could put them back you must have them on the property somewhere you know that's our national his history our national heritage that these uh, these estate managers play about with they can own as much of it as they want, but like you and I, when they're dead, they're gone. And uh, the legacy to leave behind is probably not always nice. So I think that's a shame. Obviously, no money in it. Obviously, the easy option. This is single track. Lovely track. A couple of gravel bikes have gone by me. You can tell the gravel bikes because they've got drop handle bars and uh, sweaty men on them. I'm still uh, supporting the camo gear. Although I haven't seen any parrots. So that was something interesting. Well, for me anyway. Catch you later. So, gone about 50 yards from the cast iron gate post. I've just stopped because I can see ahead of me something that looks like a wow. So we'll ride it slowly. 
It looks like a wow. It looks like something I think. It's looked like something I saw the other day on the, the uh, fish and chip ride. Uh, and David Lally, he did a video on that. And I think this. Well, I can see a vertical sandstone face formation. So let's have a look. Oh bloody hell. Wow. Graffiti carved into the sandstone. A squirrel just there. Oh my god. Just bear with me, shake a video coming up. I'm not a fan of graffiti carved into things like this but what we got nineteen seventy something there jock A B Ken something Ken Dot That's deep. That's been carved in AP. Just look at this down here. I need to uh, hold the. Right, this is going to be dead interesting. I hold, put that there. I need to get a picture on my phone. So please just bear with me. Got my phone out. All right, that'll do. The rest I can do on video. So this, I assume it's going to be on the Welbeck Estate. I've passed some white gates. They're definitely Welbeck Estate. 1831. You see, I don't particularly condone this. But 18, 18 something one, 1850, 1860, don't know. A little bit dead now, long dead. So, you know, marked their place in history forever until the erosion takes over. I've got to say, well, the trip's been really worth it anyway. My oh God, this has definitely really made it worth it. 1921. I don't know if you can believe these dates, because that there's a 1921 there, and it's fairly doesn't look that doesn't look that old. 1926, probably don't know, but it could be a guess. I'm sure. There's going to be stuff written or shown about this. I'll have to get a location, find out where it is. Um, that's a hand. That's a human hand. Wow. Back up trail, it's quite a steep. There's a route coming down there. If 
Fisher 2020. That's just looking down the, uh, the crags a bit. How many people have travelled this way before? A bit of spray paint graffiti, that's a bit pointless on sandstone I guess. Because there's bits on the other side, there's a bit here, let's just go down here a bit. Something to come and do a rubbing of I guess. See that's pretty deep there and that's got to be 1886. 1961 above it, 2020, it's obligatory, uh, I think we used to call that a plegion when you drew a man's anatomy, you know the old uh, cock and two balls, behind me again look still someone there look at these roots on these trees just hanging on Paul and Julie 09 I wonder if they're still together I wonder if they've had kids I wonder if they brought the kids up here to look at the names carved into the stone. Nineteen seventy nine. They must have spent hours doing some of this, these kids. Follow this way for 500 yards. Yeah. We've got to do another 500 yards this way. Tree roots there. Right. I'm at the end of it now. My GoPro batteries getting seriously depleted and I do want to do an end of end of trip shot at Crestwell Station but I can always do that on my phone and because I'm gonna have to edit or stick it all together anyway. So I won't edit any bits out. Just get down to this last bit. You go and hump. That's probably a memory of a couple of dogs. Probably not. Spectacular tree roots again. Logan. Right, we're at the end of it now. So, guys. How amazing has that been? Right, bringing back from Beck's farm shop. Well, I said I'd show you something interesting, if anything interesting should arise. <clears throat> see in the distance they see a house. Beautiful house, I do take a photograph of it to show on Kamut. There's the uh, mirror image of the house on the other side of this bank and between them is a rather large carriageway entrance and that was the tunnel entrance for one of the tunnels of the estate the concrete slab here I guess is to uh, protect the tunnel from my farm machinery and if you look down the edge of the field here See this swathe of 
long grass as a mound that will be the the course of the tunnel which one of the dukes had built um, <clears throat> I guess it was dug out and roofed over I don't know I assume that's how they made it Welbeck Abbey, Abbey or Welbeck House is is it Abbey? Oh, anyway you see the top of it in the distance that's the course of the tunnels this is a single track we're going to go down um, on the map this is called tunnel skylights so whether it's vented or whatever I don't know or filled in who knows anyway something of more interest on the Welbeck estate the uh, the tunnels and the lady at the house was telling me that uh, there are plans to to open them up so that should be interesting if we ever get down there so we're still on the Welbeck estate <clears throat> just sort of coming to the end of it now I think that mile along here uh, cracking cracking right through the estate very tight single track uh, doable on the Brompton in this weather a handful in the wet this is beautiful I know uh, Glumber Park's nice, Thorsby's nice <coughs> but this is the best of North Nottinghamshire absolutely superb and a fantastic hot day to do it on as well the lady at the uh, at the lodge near the tunnel entrance as she filled the water bottle up for me nice natter with her <clears throat> absolutely splendid day but we're not there yet I think when we get to the road we go left to the Welbeck farm shop so I'll stop here because I said battery's getting depleted and I would like to uh, to film from there well guys we're about a mile and a half from the railway station with Crestwell Crags visitor centre a couple of ladies here trying to do their own video I've sort of video bomb them what an amazing visiting, visiting center it is I've had my lunch in the cafe splendid lunch shop facilities it's a true true destination somewhere where North Nottinghamshire or Nottinghamshire could be proud of um, I shall go for a ride down or walk down into the crags as head back into Cresswell and then up to the railway station been a fantastic ride up to yet I think it's about mile 15 now so I'll just leave you with a view of the the center and catch you down in the uh, in the in the crags Well, we're down at crag level now. Um, <clears throat> I'm not on the footpath that goes through to the along the caves. So that's a crag. Runs down here. So we'll cycle down the track. I've got to be careful. There's a couple of school visits. One's just gone by. <clears throat> like I said, the cafe is good. Visitor centre. Proper. Uh, tourist destination which is nice because it's got it's steeped in history you know the oldest history that we know of so it's uh, pretty cool in that respect I'm not one for doing these captive destination places 
but it's certainly a <coughs> certainly a worthy container. Sort of keep the video facing that way as we pass people, so we don't get them on film. Certainly a cracking place to visit. You can see the crags. There's a bit of a, a lake or a stream that flows through. <coughs> you can see the rock formations. There's um, it's a good area for walk. Hi guys. So we'll just pedal off down here. There's a couple of caves that we should pass on the right hand side, which is a human habitation part of it. Or the later habitation, I think. It's a long time since I've been down here. Absolutely well worth the ride. <clears throat> they found loads of stuff from ancient man and prehistoric sort of mammoths and look it up on Google it, Google Crestwell Crags, absolutely cracking, cracking little bit of history. Proper a rock outcrop there, look. The caves below. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to end the video because all I've got to do now is pedal into the village a couple of hundred yards through the village and up to the railway station um, <clears throat> thanks for watching I'm going to end the video here unless I've got a long wait for the train so I might be able to say a bit more but thanks for watching the video thanks for coming on the journey it's been a bit of a, an expedition a cracking explore um, it's, it's been a true Brompton adventure and it's about as adventurous as you'd probably want to get on a Brompton for a day ride rough in places certainly if it's been raining it's going to be muddy in places but it's certainly doable on a Brompton <clears throat> I didn't stop at Clumber Park I've done it before but stop at Clumber Park if you haven't been, it's well worth it. I didn't go to the Welbeck Farm Shop in the end <clears throat> because um, the traffic on the road was horrendous and I don't want to, it's a narrow, it's not a good road, it's a very fast road and it's at the end of the day it's a farm shop and I wanted to come look at these crags in the cafe here anyway. So I've done the bits that matter, I've done the route I wanted to do. It's uh, unforgettable. Brilliant, a true adventure, and uh, I just hope when you come to watch this, I hope all the video makes sense. And uh, like I say, if I don't film from the station, I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, please give me a like. Please do the thumbs up stuff. That's a like, isn't it? And subscribe and whatever you want. Or leave some comments. Um, <clears throat> if you know my Facebook page, it's in my name. Or the uh, the Brompton Nottingham group. I'll be, there'll be a post on there with photographs on if you want more information. So thank you for coming along. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. And there we have it. Crestwell Crags. I brought you back for a little video from Crestwell Railway Station. Uh, there's the old station house. That's the upline to Nottingham. That's the downline to Warwick Sop. Old railway signal there. Signal box over there. <clears throat> so like I say, that's been an epic ride. It's been a fantastic ride. It's one to do, get it on your to-do list. Make sure the weather's nice. I was gonna do a guided ride, 
with the uh, Brompton Nottingham. I'm not going to do that because uh, <clears throat> I don't mind taking my bike down, stuff like that. I would want to expect other people to. But you'll see the video, you'll see the photographs, and you can make that decision for yourself. So, I've got five minutes waiting for the train, so that's five minutes to talk to you about. No, I won't. <coughs> um, brilliant day. And it's getting on for two o'clock probably now, I think. So it's taken me, it's taken me all day to do the ride. And I can't say I've stopped, I've stopped to take photographs. I've stopped to take video. Cafe at Crestwell was busy, so if you do do it, be self-supporting in food as much as you can. I know most of the guys I ride with are self-supporting. Um, it's the old adage, we have, they have these coffee machines and it takes minutes to make a cup of coffee for everybody. I like. I don't even like the coffee they make anyway, so I generally brew my own. But I had a good lunch there. I had a, I had a egg and mayonnaise cob, a packet of crisps, a tart cake type thing, a bottle of ginger beer. It was nine quid. So, you know, I guess an average price for a lunch. <coughs> the crags, well worth a visit. I didn't go down to the crags. You, you're going to be there. A couple of hours at least to visit the crags to visit the Cumber Park. You're going to be as long as you want. So, if I was to do this again and to take in all the bits to look at, I would get the train to Cresswell, I would ride. The trail I've ridden up through Welbeck Estates to the cutting with the carved names and all that and probably into the woods there. Um, that's been easy, it should be a hard ride up but an easy ride down. Or every, every road crossing I've come to there's been a bus stop. So Brompton, look at bus times, look at the train, look at the connections, put a tour together. It's an arduous, it's more than a day's tour to look at everything. I won't do this again in a day. I will break it down to sections and I'll do it as with public transport. Or the car if there's four of us or five of us. And I will I will break it down into, into sections. Cumber Park's worth doing. The ride into Cumber Park is worth doing. The ride from Sharp Railway Station is brilliant. That is part of the Duke's Trail, which goes on to Lincoln. That is very much worth doing. That's about a 40, 45 mile route from Sharp Railway Station called the Duke's Trail. Look at that. It's amazing. I've done it from Lincoln to home, camping at Botham Sul. Um, loads of stuff to stop and look at that's my problem i'll have to stop and look at stuff i can't just head down right on i've got to start i've got to look at stuff take it all in take some photographs because it's you're passing it once it's your once in a lifetime of your only life you're going to have so do it um north nottinghamshire has got some cracking cycling you've seen the video i did to uh all the route i've done to chesterfield i don't think i've done a video on that yet <coughs> Pleasure Trails, uh, Five Pits Trails, Route 6, National Cycle Network 6, all those strands have disowned part of that, which is a crying shame. Um, well, I guess they've got the motives as uh, honourable as they could possibly be, I guess. I don't know. It's certainly gone off the map. So get paper maps proper paper maps not the modern ones because even the latest strands maps have got the gaps electronic mapping certainly has the gaps um, so you want the maps previous to 2020 I should think 22 20 the new maps came out last year with the sections missing so get the paper maps get the old strands guidebooks 
because all the roots are in there um, and you put some tours together and go and explore any Brompton or any bike public transport there's links everywhere you can't get lost in this country so that is the final 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 say other than click a like subscribe leave me a comment and I'll catch you on the next one which maybe something about bags that's in the pipeline and maybe from Kings Lynn or Hunstanton or Sandringham I'm off over there so Norfolkish all the best thank you for watching and I catch you again.